It's time once again to talk about Python, as today marks the launch of its first beta release. For those who don't know, beta releases mark the feature freeze for the respective version, meaning no new features can be added. It's a good time to check in and get a good idea of what will be coming in October. I'm only going to be talking about things that have already been implemented or have a pep that's been accepted, as while there are some really cool draft peps marked for 3.14, I want to keep this video focused on features that, all things permitting, will definitely be in the final release. Any remaining draft peps will likely be released in Python 3.15 instead. Among the changes are some very highly anticipated features, as well as a number of quality of life improvements that are always greatly appreciated. So without any further ado, let's take a look at what's new in Python 3.14. I want to start with the most recent changes as two substantial features have been merged in the last week. The first of these, merged last Wednesday, is the one I've been desperate to try for myself, T-strings. T standing for template, these new string types aim to address the limitations of F-strings, particularly with regards to usage in situations where security is paramount. It's worth noting though that they're designed to supplement F-strings, not replace them. T-string literals are actually template objects which have strings and interpolations attributes. Here the interpolations are all the bits inside the curly brackets and the strings are everything else. By accessing the different parts of the string, the interpolations can be intercepted before the final string is fully resolved, meaning they can be modified if necessary, such as when sanitizing inputs. This would typically be done by passing a T-string to a callable which then returns the finalized string literal. A previous version of this pep defined tag strings, which are similar in concept, but use custom prefixes that called callables based on the tag name. While that did sound cool, I'm glad they changed that, as I could see that becoming very messy. But now they're finally here, I'll be making a video about them soon, so stay tuned. Just two days after that was merged, PyRepple gained syntax highlighting. Granted, it's not a change quite on the same level as T-strings, but it represents another huge quality of life improvement for the interpreter that was only recently brought kicking and screaming into the 21st century. Probably still has a nasty case of whiplash. Now to one of the first features to be implemented in 3.14, and perhaps the most anticipated. The deferred evaluation of type annotations defined in PEPs 649 and 749 introduces lazy evaluation of type annotations, solving the problem with both annotation implementations thus far. The original implementation suffered from forward and circular reference problems at the analysis stage, while the opt-in stringized annotations introduced in Python 3.7 caused issues for those looking at annotations at runtime. The new implementation in Python 3.14 evaluates annotations only when needed, solving the forward and circular reference problems, while also allowing annotations to be understood properly at runtime. It's the best of both worlds. These changes come alongside a new standard library module called Annotation Lib, which provides some helper functions for working with annotations. This isn't the only new standard library module in 3.14, with a new ZSTD module being added for Z standard compression. I'm a particularly big fan of Z standard compression and tend to use it if I ever have the option to, so it's nice to see first class support for it coming to Python. The ZSTD module, as well as the already existing LZMA, BZ2, GZIP, and Zlib ones, will be contained under a new compression namespace, with existing modules being re-exported from it. This will become the new canonical namespace for all compression modules. Now for a special edition of PEPs that could have been an email, we have PEP 758, which allows you to catch multiple exceptions using accept or accept star without needing brackets. Now don't get me wrong, I do like this change. I just don't think it needed to be a PEP. Or maybe it did, I don't know. Either way, it's a nice change, so whatever. Exception handling generally has improved greatly with many more error situations getting more helpful messages. The error system can now detect typos and keywords, print the received number of values when unpacking in more situations than before, detect when elif has been used after else, provide more useful information when a statement is given in conditional expressions, inquire further when it detects strings that may have been terminated accidentally, explain which string prefixes are incompatible when they are provided, and provide a more helpful message when using the as keyword with incompatible targets. Python 3.14 will also now raise a syntax warning when a return, break or continue statement is used in a finally block to prevent inadvertently swallowing exceptions. This change was originally proposed for Python 3.8 but was rejected in favour of adding it as a pep8 rule instead. Linters will typically flag this rule already, but due to this behaviour never really being desired, Python itself will warn you about it now and prevent you from doing it outright in a future version. Which version this is isn't clear, but it will be at least Python 3.16. 
Python 3.13 added many opt-in features to change Python's behavior, and 3.14 adds one of its own, a new tail call interpreter. Now, I'd be lying if I said this kind of thing is my area of expertise, but I'll explain it the best I can, and if anyone watching this knows more about it, please do correct me or expand on what I've described here in the comments below. Python's current interpreter handles most, if not all, opcodes in a giant switch case statement, where each opcode has its own case. An opcode, by the way, is just a fancy term for a Python bytecode instruction. The new interpreter uses what's called tail calls, whereby each opcode has its own C function, which directly calls the next opcode's function when it returns. Python's source code is compiled using the Clang compiler, which from version 19 can optimize these tail calls in a way that it can't optimize the giant switch case statement. This optimization makes Python between three and 5% faster on average, with up to 30% observed in some situations. Python 3.14 won't use this interpreter by default as it's still experimental, so you'll need to build Python with the with tail call interp flag if you plan to use it. It's also worth noting that this is not tantamount to tail call optimization in Python itself, just the C code it's built on. Finally, as always, let's look at some smaller changes that grab my attention. Python 3.14's free threaded mode will have the specializations from the specialized adaptive interpreter enabled, improving performance for that mode. Date times, time and date objects now have string parse time methods. JSON serialization errors are now more detailed, which I am so happy about. Pathlib's path objects now have additional methods for copying and moving files and directories. And union and union type are now aliases of each other, unifying the behaviors of the old and new union type syntaxes. Of course, this isn't every single thing that's been added or changed in Python 3.14. I'd be here until the release of Python 3.15 if I talked about everything. But these are what I consider at least to be the highlights. I'll leave links to everything I've talked about as well as the What's New document in the description below for you to look over as you please. Over the next few weeks, I'll be talking about some of the features I've discussed here in more detail, so make sure to subscribe to be the first in the know. You can also watch anything I've done on Python 3.14 so far by checking out the playlist linked in the cards. Let me know what you think of the upcoming changes in the comments below, like if you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one for whatever we do next.